The next thing we need to calculate is flow direction since we just filled in all the sinks. Water in a given cell can flow to one or more of its eight adjacent cells as we see here in figure 2.1.1.48D. This concept is called the eight direction poor point model. So you're probably wondering, well, where do these numbers come from? It seems kind of random. Well, they're actually not random. They come from binary. So it goes from 0 to 1, and there's eight, there's 8 slots in here. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then as we progress down here, each one can have a 1 in it. So if it flows in a certain direction, a 1 will go here. The position of the 1 in binary shifts, of course, we can see here. Everywhere there is a 0 indicates off or no value. Everywhere there is a 1 indicates on or calculate the value in for that slot. The value to calculate kind of works like this. The base is always 2 because it's either on or off, only two choices. Its position is the power. In binary, we always start with 0, of course. We've got 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th. So there's 8 positions here, and we're starting with 0, so we lose number 8. So we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then, once we take 2 to the 0, we get 1. 2 to the 1st, we get 2. We get these numbers here, 1 through 128. And each of these numbers correspond to a direction. So 1 is east, 2 is southeast, 4 is south, and 8 is southwest, as we can see here in this diagram. And then how it knows exactly which direction it's going to be is it uses slope calculation between two diagonal and or adjacent cells. So starting with 44, it'll probably start with doing 44 to 37, and then 44 to 49, 56 to 44, it determines its slope that occurs between each cell. So we see in this example here on the left side, this is the before, and after calculations, these are the numbers that go in each cell. So we can see here from 67 to 44, water is obviously going to flow from 67 to 44, so we see the number 2 occurring there. And the number 2 means water is going to flow in the southeast direction. And we see a 128 over here indicating that water, as we can see here, 58 to 44, we would expect that water would flow in the northeast direction. So we see a 128. And then over here we see a 2, meaning that water is going to flow in the southeast direction. So eventually when we go through and we calculate all the grids like that, we're going to get something that kind of looks like this. Each cell is going to contain a bunch of arrows. And eventually we'll be able to kind of connect these together to create a pattern or what we call a flow direction. So we're back into ArcMap and what we're going to do is we're going to use the flow direction tool. So what we've learned thus far is the flow direction tool is used to determine which direction water is flowing across a grid cell. So in the Arc Toolbox in the Arc Hydro Tools in the Terrain Preprocessing group I'm going to choose the flow direction tool, I'm going to drag and drop that into my model builder right underneath fill sinks. And I see that it tries to put a fill sink in there for me. And actually, I want to use the one that's already in my model builder. I'm going to use the connect tool and connect fill sink to flow direction as an input hydro DEM. Then I'm going to right click on the tool and choose open. And I want to make sure that this ends up in my geo database. And I'm going to save it as FDR, which stands for flow direction. Down here it says input outer wall polygon. And this doesn't really apply to us right now because we don't have any major streams or rivers going on in here. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to right click on my flow direction and I'm going to choose run. Once it's done, I'll go ahead and click close. It's already added it to my data frame. I'm just going to drag and drop it right on top of my fill sink and underneath my hillshade. 
and I can begin to see my different flow directions. It kind of works like aspect almost. 